good day. Welcome to On The Spot. My name is Marco, and today we will be joined by the ED, that is the Executive Director at the Ministry of Sport, Youth and National Service, ED Haitengela. Uh, ED, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, welcome to On The Spot. Thank you very much for having me. Yes. Today we are dealing with uh, a lot of issues, broad-based issues within the ministry. I'm seeing that you've got three directorates. Um, how have you found yourself here ever since you moved? Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm settling in very well. Uh, I know there's a lot of challenges we are having within the ministry, but we are getting there. Uh -huh. yes. All right, diving right into it. Um, we'll start off with the sports directorate, um, yes. which basically is what I specialize in. Okay. But uh, looking at it, what is the plan with sports officers? Because we see that there are very few officials that are appointed and most are perceived to be ineffective and not visible. I've had experiences personally when you go to the regions. Um, we have seen ministry cars being used for personal, uh, you know, personal businesses, uh, but nothing is happening in the world of sports. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, sport officers are the key to the ministry because the the eyes and ears of the ministry within the region, and therefore it's very important for us to make sure that they are properly equipped and properly trained. Yes, it's true that we are having a challenge with some of the sport officers in the region where they are not uh, complying with the, with, the, with the regulations as they should be. And in some areas, we have a shortage of sport officers. What we are busy doing now is that uh, we are trying now to make sure that we fill those positions which are vacant. And in addition to that, I think the good thing is that now with decentralization which is taking place now, we are now working together with the regional council so that we make sure that we get the right people for the right positions. Because it's, as you know, it's very difficult for somebody to, you know, you are sitting in Venduk, and somebody is sitting, for example, in Kunene, mm. in, sorry, in Opo, for example. That relationship sometimes causes us not to be very effective. And with the decentralization which is now taking place of us now seconding our staff members to the regional council, that will really help us a lot to improve in terms of efficiencies and in terms of service delivery. Yes, we do acknowledge that we do have a challenge there, but we are working on it. And our goal is to make sure that we fill most of the positions subject to budget, of course. Uh, but we want to make sure that we have port officers everywhere where we have officers. Um, would you put a time frame on the filling of those positions? Uh, it would be very difficult for us because, uh, you see, we, we work with uh, uh, budget tally provisions. And we sometimes need to make priorities. So we cannot say that we want to fill all the positions within the next financial year. So we said maybe we need to start, let's say, uh, uh, we look at the priority areas. For example, let's say Kunene, let's say Kavango West. Now I'm just uh, 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 mentioning some. And then we can start from there. But I cannot really tell you that we can fill those within a year or two. But our plan, hopefully within the next three years, if everything goes according to plan, most of the sports will be filled. Okay. Yeah. So um, global sports bodies like FIFA don't tolerate government interference, for example. Um, mm -hmm. As government, now, how do you make sure that um, the country's image is not harmed? How do you ensure good governance, especially mm -hmm. maybe for federations, number one? Mm -hmm. And number two, even for the sports officers, how, how do you ensure that there is good governance? Let's start with federations. Okay. Thank you very much. If you, if, if, in fact, it's very interesting that you're asking that government interference. You have already seen that with the football. Mm. Who is running football today? You see? Mm. It's because government has given that right to FIFA to have a leeway in terms of to, to implement what they want to do. Mm. For us, it's just to provide uh, policies and directives as a country, as a ministry, and to provide funding where it's needed. The challenge sometimes comes in when you have uh, federations who want to dictate terms to government that we will not tolerate. Mm. And that's why we want them to, to abide by the international codes of, 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 of ethics and for them to operate in, in line with what they are, not what we want them to be. Because after all, we are not specialists in, in sport, like you said. We are there to facilitate, you know, for this federation to, to thrive. You have seen what we have done with rugby, mm. you know, the, the amount of money we put in. No, they are going to the World Cup now in, in France. And you, you know, imagine if we were not that committed to let them operate and them giving us their budget. And that's what we did. They gave us their budget and then we funded them. And they do according to what is needed. So I think that's, that's what we want to, to do. We will never, as a ministry, we will never 
uh, interfere unless there's a really a crisis. But our interference will be limited to what we can do in compliance with, like you said, with international bodies. And locally, how do you make sure that there's good governance? Um, seeing that already you are speaking about giving rugby a certain amount of money. Yes. Um, as a ministry, you, you give that kind of money to almost all the federations when you have it. Um, how do you make sure that that money is used for whatever it's, 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 it's meant for? Okay, thank you. You see, before we, we don't just dish out money like that. We ask them to give them to give us their programs. So we need to see the programs. What do they need to do in the next twelve months? Um, and then they can say no. We like, for example, I'm, I'm I'm happy to use rugby because the way they put their program to us, it was very good. So they specify what do they need the fund for, and then after that. When we start dispersing money to them, then they give us reports. You know, we give them one million, said, no, this million you gave us, that's how we spend it. And that's what we need to do. Some of the federation, they wanted to give us a global budget. We need 10 million, but you're not explaining what you're going to use 10 million for. We will not give you that, unless you give us a breakdown of your programs and how we are going to, you know, as a country, to benefit from it. Mm. And it's also, again, subject to... <laughs> Funds availability. Yeah. yeah, we cannot say we can give to each and every one money. We don't have, unfortunately, government, you know, cannot have that uh, endless uh, cash. And the role of the Namibia Sports Commission? Yes. Um, we, yeah, no, I think, no, Sports Commission, remember, they, they are our baby, if I may call it that way. Mm -hmm. So their role is exactly what you said. They were supposed to be the eyes and ears of government in terms of making sure that the, the federations operate uh, efficiently. But there comes a time when we have a challenge, and then they, the federation tried to sidestep the, the sport commission to come to us. But the ideal situation is, is for them to go through the sport commission, and then to us. But when there's a need or there's an issue we need to, to clear up, they can come to us direct. Okay. But our ideal position is that they should really work through the sport commission. Okay. Otherwise, then why did we create sport commission as a ministry if we are not <laughs> capacitating them to deal with that? Um, in terms of the rural sports facilities, um, yes. most of them are crumbling in, uh, to a point of dilapidation. Yes. Um, what is the plan for these facilities? Uh, it's, it's very unfortunate that uh, when the budgets of all the ministries were cut, you know, five years ago, I think, or so, we, it's always easy for people to target the soft spot, then you neglect the other. And that's what we did, uh, unfortunately. We have not put our maintenance plan in, 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 in operation then. Then it's led to what you are saying that most of our sport facilities in, ended up being uh, not in a good shape. But luckily, starting from la last year's budget, we started now having maintenance plan and maintenance budget. So we have budgeted not much, but it's enough to revive or to clean up some of the, the facilities within the region. So we, we are starting. And I'm sure you can see now, hopefully within the next 12 months, we will see things happening. And as we speak, uh, we are busy trying to to appoint uh, a consultant uh, to help us uh, to look at what do we need to do at all the facilities within the whole country. So that we know that, for example, in, in uh, Ochuarongo, if you have a facility there, Ochuarongo's uh, facility need X, Y, Z, and it's going to cost you $2. Then they inform us, then we go ahead and then we appoint a contractor to clean up that. So we are busy. You know, our maintenance plan is now. Has there been any considerations for private, uh, for public-private partnerships in yeah. running these facilities? I, I think it's something we we we, we, are, we we are able to look into. If it is, in fact, we are busy with one now. I cannot mention it, but we are busy with one proposal which came to us to do exactly that, and I think that's the way to go. You know, if you you know you cannot run every, everything as a ministry everywhere, but again, remember as I said at the beginning that we are busy with the decentralization process. Oh, yeah. That will help us a lot because now, when when we transfer all that facilities within that region to the regional council, then they will be able to to, to make sure that we we supervise and and do a good job. And for us, it's just for us to support them financially and and in, in human resources. But that will be the way to go. Yeah, and and we agree that uh, PP is the way to go. Public private partnership is the way to go. Uh, Idi, we were excited uh, last year when it was announced that uh, Namibia and Botswana are going to come together <laughs> and bid for the Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Explain to us the whole debate. What happened? There? Yeah. No, no, I, I think Bona, 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 Bona. Everybody's talking about Bona. Yes. 
No, no, it, it, it was a good initiative. It is still a good initiative. You know, the two governments coming together to, you know, to form that agreement to host, you know, in 27. Mm. It, it, it was a good agreement. But you must also understand that Namibia and Botswana are sovereign countries. Each country has its own procurement processes to follow. So in this case, what happened really is that uh, in terms of the agreement, we were given specific items, both of us need to fund. Namibia uh, paying 40, Botswana paying 60. And then we have seen the first one was now the facility audit, mm -hmm. which we did together nicely. We got the report nicely. Then the second one was now for us to have a lead consultant. Now that lead consultant is now the person who was supposed now to put everything together, to package it so that we can sell, you know, that mm -hmm. we, we are able. So what happened there is that we agreed on a specific amount which we need to pay. Namibia, 40% is this much. Botswana, 40% is this much. Um, and that's the amount which we have given to our Minister of Finance to give us the funds which they did. Now, when the process started, somehow, somewhere, we took too long. The two countries took too long to, to finalize the appointment of the facility audit. Uh, not facility, but a lead consultant. Mm -hmm. And then when the, the time came, it was very too short, closer to for us to submit. Then the amount which was now being asked by the, this lead consultant was way above what we agreed upon. And for us, the timing, because we needed to go back to Minister of Finance and Cabinet to get that approval, it was not on our side. And that's why we informed the colleague from the colleagues, as much as we want to be part of this, this issue of funding, we agreed that Namibia's position is this much. Now, for us to move from, I think if I can tell you the figure, mm -hmm. the figure was around uh, uh, in, uh, 9 million there. Mm -hmm. But now from moving from 9 million to 45 million, yeah. you understand that. I'm just giving a hint. Yeah. That's what really happened. So the amount was way too much. We even wrote to Mr. Finance said, no, there's no way we can do that. And remember, this lead was under, I mean, this facility, or, I mean, this consultant was only going to prepare documentation. So it's a bet. You know, must when you bet. You know, <laughs> yeah. now you want me as a country to put in 40 million just for a documentation, which is a 50 50. Yeah. So that's really what happened, really. So that's why we, we informed our colleagues that for us, the process takes too long. And the time frame for us now to commit, you're giving us time frame to commit to this and to, for them to sign on our behalf. We said, no. Unfortunately, we, the only option we have is for us to follow. But we do understand that it, 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 it's unfortunate. And the timing was not right. And sometimes some of this information you do not want to share. You know, you just yeah. you need to consult your own. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. And the, and the unfortunate part, it leaked. You have seen in the, the paper. The papers, yeah. Yeah, but it was really that. Yeah. It was really the cost issue. Cost implication was really way too much. And what we could have put in that time. Hey, can the football fans look forward to Namibia maybe bidding next time if everything is done accordingly? Yes. Yes. No, no. I, I think we are hopeful that. Uh, once we clean up our, our infrastructures mm -hmm. and the issues, you know, we want Namibia to participate in such uh, international organization and for us to, to host such event, hopefully together with other countries, with the chance again give a uh, come to our side to do that. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Vienna yeah. Stadium. Yes. It's been in construction for the past 12 years. Yes. And everybody uses it to their advantage. Yes. Um, what, what, what is going on there? Okay, thank you. You know, it, it's really true. You know, that, like you said, you know, sometimes it takes too long to finish projects. And the, the Anana one is a classic uh, uh, example of what happened when you do not do the things right. I think Anana's uh, stadium had uh, an issue with the initial contractor was appointed. Somehow, some way, as a ministry, together as Minister of Work, we not do, did not do a good job in terms of due diligence. So it ended up that the person has to leave, that company has to leave, and then just abandon site like that. That's why it took a bit of time for us to revive it, and then to, for us to have an arrangement with the current contractor uh, so that we can um, start the process again. I'm sure if you have been there since last year, we have seen some movement now. Mm -hmm. We have seen that we have done with the compacting of the, of the field itself. And uh, we have made budgetary provision for it. 
uh, me and my team, we went there, we met with the contractors, we identified some shortcomings, and we asked him to cost those shortcomings in terms of the infrastructure. Like, for example, there was no flood light. Mm. And he said, no, you cannot have a sport facility without, you know, what happened if the team play at night? Yeah. The other issue which we found out which we needed to correct was the number of ablution facilities toilet. You know, you have very few, but you have so many. For years, you have volleyball there, netball there, cricket, tomorrow hopefully, <laughs> rugby there, and so on. So it, it's, you see, that's a very good um, plan, the, the way that it's set up is. But you cannot have only two or three toilets facility for, for the whole thing. So that's other, some of the issues we mentioned. To, to the contractor, and then they did, they gave us a cost. We are looking at it. But as we speak in the current budget, we have uh, around 10 million already, mm -hmm. ready, which we are using already. I'm sure if you go there today, you will see them working. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter for us now to, to make sure that we we follow up on what the progress they are doing. We will not let them just like what happened in the past. They, they are on their own. They do what they want to do. But this contractor, we are very happy with them, their progress. It's just a matter of maybe us as a ministry and them understanding on what we need to do in terms of milestone before we, 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 we disperse the next funding. In terms of time frame, do you have any time frame for us to say we anticipate that the stadium will be complete in five years, mm -hmm. three years? Mm -hmm. you see, I remember that the original, you see, because if you look at another stadium, as I said, there were some components mm -hmm. which we thought by June this year will finish. We let us, uh -uh, we cannot do that. If you want to finish the whole at, at once, you need to have a comprehensive budget. So when you get that comprehensive budget, now it depends on the Minister of Finance, how much are they willing to give us. If, we say, if they give us what we ask, within two years, we can finish it, because you have the funds. But if you don't have the funds for us to finish within two years, then we can say maybe three years, four years. But our plan, really, our goal is hopefully within two years, uh, subject to, as I said, subject to us getting the funds. As I said, now we got now the new cost estimate for us to finish. In addition to the 10 million, as I said, we have, there's more costs which we need now to take into account. And that's what we're going to, to, to submit to Mr. Finance with our budget mm -hmm. to see if they can allow us to get that, whether it's within two years or three years. But we know once we get this money, we will finish. There's no way about it. There is a, a feeling outside, uh, you know, these offices or in the country generally that sports is treated as a stepchild of Namibia. The ministry is not treated as other ministries are treated when it comes to finance and so on and so forth. Um, judging by the peanuts that are given to the sports bodies and the ministry and, 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 and the way sports issues are being tackled, would you agree to that sentiment? Who said we actually were getting peanuts? <laughs> we don't get peanuts. <laughs> well, I mean, if, if, if we look at the, the budget that you have been getting the past five years, yes. honestly, it's, it's not, to be honest, I don't think it even, it's enough. Personally, it's not enough to, for your operations. Yeah, but remember, mm -hmm. budget is driven by the ministry itself. It's not Minister of Finance to dictate to us what we need to do. It's us. So if you do not put programs there on budget for Minister of Finance to give us money, they will not give us money. You see, that's where the mistake is. People say, no, the Minister of, Minister of Justice and Minister of Sport is getting peanuts. No. What do we as a ministry table at Minister of Finance or propose to fund? But surely you do propose all these projects that we spoke about? No, that's where the mistake is. Because sometimes that's what you think is what we do, but it's not always the case. That's why we are saying now we go out to say, give us your total cost estimate of your project. Like we're talking about Enana. Mm. How much money do we need to finish this project? This has been on for 12 years. And I said, no, in order for us to finish it, we need X amount of a million dollars. I said, okay, give us that. We put it in our budget. We go to Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance, we have a Nana. A Nana, in order for us to finish it, we need this X amount of money to finish it. Are you willing to give it to us in one year or two years or three years? And I said, no, no, we need to spread it over three years. Here's the money. That's how we should do it. But honestly speaking, sometimes we blame Ministry of Finance for our own mistake. That's why you see other ministers are getting a lot of money because they have proper programs and they can uh, support them with um, proper facts. You know, sometimes I can just say, I need 10 million for this part. When, when you go there, they ask us, you know, what is the feasibility study? How much, you know? We don't have that backup. And that's why I'm saying, if we have those backup, 
government is willing to, to meet us halfway so that we can move away from that peanuts, peanuts mm -hmm. we are talking about to get. And I'm sure we will. It's really a matter of us as a ministry with the regions to look at key projects which, are, which will make a meaningful impact to the youth in terms of sport. Then they will, they will, they will look into that. They will not say it's just now, no. So would you say there is a political will to improve uh, the sport, sports in this country? Yes. No, of course, there is political will. As I said, it was more an issue of management, if I may put it that way, and the stakeholder outside there. Political will is there. But you cannot just sit here and expect things to happen if you do not make it happen yourself. You know, as a ministry. Mm. That's right my point, if you get it. You know, we were supposed to be proactive in identifying, as I said, key ones. Not all of them will be funded, but key ones. Independent Stadium. Yes. It's a key one, the Independent Stadium. Yes. What are the politicians saying? Are they happy that the national team, the Brave Warriors, are playing in South Africa? No, they are not happy. That's why they so are. What are they doing about it? It's not politician. It's us. Remember, if you remember very well, last year mm. we got fifty million, and then what happened? We got fifty million to start the project, mm. but somewhere, somewhere uh, between the, this ministry and Minister of Works and other stakeholders, did not do a, a proper job in terms of due diligence to to make sure that when we go out on tender, we comply with FIFA requirement and CAF requirement. And those CAF requirements are the ones which make sure that we, 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 we do the stadium according to the standards which is needed. Now, if you give me 50 million and there was no proper cost estimate done. And, but, now, and, and now, when we start, when we went out, then they said, no, no, your requirement does not meet. That's what happened, basically. When you went out on tender and what we got from the market, it was not really addressing the, the requirement of FIFA and CAF. And that's why the good thing, like you spoke about, we went with this Bonner thing, we did the facility audit, and that gave us a very good, uh, a good, a, a clear picture of what we need to do. But it cost us a lot of money, more than 50 million you're talking about. It won't cost us more than that. But at least the 50 million will start something, and when people see that there's something happening, yeah. they are sort of calm down to say, okay, yeah. at least the government is doing something. Because when you are yeah. saying that, the, the politicians have the will yes. to make sure that they, they have the will to improve sports. Yes. And we have the independent stadium, yes. which is dilapidating daily yes. because it's not being maintained yes. and it's not being improved. Yes. It, it's, it's sort of conflicting statements. No, no, I hear you. But remember, as I said, that it, it, the issue was more to do with us. When I say us, I'm talking about now the ministries involved in putting up the right requirements for us to fix that. Mm. Secondly, you must also remember that Government work on uh, no one year budget is my pretty simple. Budget cycle, yes. Yes. Last year's fifty million is gone. You see, that's why you cannot say you have fifty million. Fifty million was allocated in last year's budget. And we were supposed to spend it before the close of that year's financial year budget, which is now March this year, twenty twenty three March. That's why when we realized already last year that we are not able to do, you no, know, we have to go back to Minister of Finance and ask them, give us permission to use that 50 million to clean up other areas which we needed to do, and they did that. That's why now, if you look in the current budget, for the, or as we speak now, mm -hmm. they put in 37 million. Mm -hmm. But that's not still enough, but it's a matter of us now to say, okay, we did 37 million, what can we start with now? So that we can now uh, start with the renovation. We know that that will go, we, 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 when we look at the cost which was now given to us in the facility audit report, and the cost estimate. It's way above that. But we want to start like you're saying. That's why today already we had the in fact we had the technical committee already, which is working on the on the on the uh, uh, upgrade of of, um, of uh, independent, independent stadium. Mm -hmm. It consists of the Minister of Works team, uh, NFA team, mm -hmm. and the ministry itself. So we sit every week. And today before you came, we had just had a meeting. And hopefully by next week, we'll start now with the, with the adverts of the lead consultant. Because we need to make sure now that this time around, let's not make the same mistake twice. Last year, we went, but we don't do the right thing. Now we've got all the CAF requirements. We look at the items identified in the facility audit. And we look at all things which we need to do so that when we appoint a lead consultant, we know that we are appointing the person to do the right thing. And then that lead consultant will sit with us, with the committee, Say, this is what we want you to do for us. 
So we are excited as a ministry, and we are really hoping that now the ball will start moving very faster for us ready to... Uh, so to we, we, we talk about the 50 million that was put last year. Yes. The ministry going to finance to say, look, we are not going to be able to use the 50 million for this, but we are going to use it for this. Yes. Um, we have the bona, we have the bona budget as well. Yes. Um, you spoke about the nine million. Yes. Could have been more with other yes. things, for yes. example. Yes. Also, now that we're out of bona, yes. what happens to that budget? Also, does it go to cleaning up other things? Yes. Okay. As I said, remember last year's. In fact, very interestingly, mm -hmm. the money for for bona, mm -hmm. we took it a portion of it. We took from that fifty million. Because we knew already, as I told you, that we were not able to fix. So we went to Minister of Finance, and Minister of Finance gave us this money, a portion of this money, so that we can start running with a Bona project. And they agreed. That's why we have an account which was created for Bona. And then we put money in there. Mm -hmm. Now Bona is normal. So we have now to, to account for each and every cent we spent. We did spend some money on Bona, irrespective mm -hmm. of of uh, what happened. Yes. So we have paid all the outstanding uh, invoices, even our portion of 40% for, for for the facility audit to Botswana, mm. because we need to pay that 40%, which is again, up, I think 1.3 million, mm. a million dollar. So we have paid, because that was our, our portion of that agreement. Mm. Plus all the other outstanding invoices we have paid. So now just a matter for us now to roll up this uh, balance, and then to say, OK, this is the small balance left. We can even now uh, ask Minister of Finance for us to convert it back, going back to the stadium, so that we can also do. It's not a lot of money, but it can start, like you're saying, we can start moving in addition to the 37 million I said we have. So we can start on that. Yeah, no. So in, in terms of, of 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 the money going back to, um, uh, you know, the money going back to finance, are we going to see a change that the minister does not send money back to finance because? Sports really needs money. Yes. Whether it's the federations themselves, yes. the facilities, yes. you know, it, we, 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 that money is needed. Yes. How are we working on improving that? Okay. No, as I said, um, what we normally do, uh, we sit in the ministry. I'm sure other ministries do sit with their financial advisors and they will look at the budget execution. How much money did we spend so far? And we look at the projection in the next four months before the financial year ends. We have this much money. Are we able to spend all this, or we will be able to, to let this money go at the end of the, the, the day? Or can we not go to the Minister of Finance and ask them if we can transfer this money to the Federation, like through the Sport Commission, mm. or the Youth Service, which really need a lot of money, and they have a lot of projects. And that's what we normally do. And that's what we also did with last year with the 50 million. A portion of that went to the National Youth Service, you know, to, to clean some of the outstanding uh, issues they, they needed to, to do. So that's what we do. So it's not as a matter of us sitting and waiting for the financial year and, and then said, oh, we're sitting with 10 million. You know, no, we, we, already, we already already project before time that this money, if we don't do, if we don't spend it, we will retain it, or we need to go back to the Minister of Finance and ask them to allow us to varament that money to either National Youth Council for the service or the Sport Commission, if there are a uh, reasonable grant for us to give them that money. If not, then yeah, we have to send back the money to the Minister of Finance. Yeah, you, you, you are speaking about the National uh, Youth Service. Um, maybe I can also ask you about it now. Mm -hmm. I have a question on that. Mm -hmm. um, the National Service, uh, the National Youth Service Program, mm -hmm. um, it was meant to promote patriotism yes. in the country. Uh, yes. And if you look at how it was established, we benchmarked it against other countries whereby when somebody finishes high school, yes. they take a one year off, they go and get trained yes. somewhere, and then you know they come back and they can continue with their university or whatever. Yes. Yes. Um, what is the minister doing to implement this program? Because we haven't, ever since it was started, we haven't had the grade 12s being told that this grade 12, starting from this year, mm. we are taking you mm. for, for, the, for the service. OK, well, thank you very much. You see. The issue with national youth service is a bit complicated because their programs are, um, are quite a program which, which need a lot of funding. When they submit a budget to us, they put in their request, like let's say they need 200 million, for example. But when you go to Minister of Finance, they are not able to cover the whole lot. That's why they sometimes cut the number of trainees they wanted to to to, 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 to have. So if you look at what happened last year, 
they they had I think I forgot the number. I don't know whether it's 93, which they put on on a training, but they wanted to have more than 200, more or less, if I'm not mistaken. But because of the funding, they were unable to do that. But what we are trying to do now is we are trying now to help them as a ministry through the Ministry of Finance to make sure that we, we get more funding, more funding for them so that they, they are able to, to carry out the mandate, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, you know that they also have what they call the, the National Youth Security Service, mm -hmm. where they have the young people who went through that civic training. Yes. They are now doing the, you know, this uh, wonderful job of security. But the, the, the ultimate goal, if, if, it, if it could be realized, is that most of these people who went through this civic training could either be absorbed in the defense force, police force, or the correctional services. Because those are the people who went through the basic training of, 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 of um, civic. They, they understand and they appreciate you know, that the discipline that is very important. But yeah, you know my politics is everywhere. You cannot even say, yeah, why, why them and why not us? And you have seen it already. Yeah. It happens, uh, you know, in other area where people saying, yeah, you know, we want it because the intention was for us now to say, look, Minister of Defense, if you are having, uh, you know, recruitment drive of maybe one thousand, we want to give you this two hundred yes. you know, on the go. But they say, no, we cannot do that. What about other Namibian youth? So that's where the challenge is. Now they go through this. They end up in the street again. You know, they went through the civic training and and and, but they, there is no uptake. So, was there any consultation between government amongst government ministries to say there is a program like this? It's going to work in our favor if we implement it like this. Yes, no, there, there is. I think even in the past it happened. I think it happened once in the past that the the the, the, tra the trainee went through and then they went. But you know, as I said, politic dynamics change, uh -huh. and people become much more vocal, and they have issues. And people said, okay, no, let it be, let it be a, a free competition to everybody. But uh, the good thing is most of them, irrespective of that, they pass through because fitness tests, they, they go through. You've heard what happened to some of the people who were, <laughs> they were the hopefuls. They, yes. they could not take it because of the, the pressure of, of, you know, that. but the, 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 the youth who came from the national service, they did. Because of that, they, they were ready for it. Yeah. We'll so, come back to the, to the national service. Um, the Katatura Youth Complex. Yes. Um, the sports facilities there, they are no longer safe for, yes. for sports people that want to participate there. We know there, is a, there are boxing yes. uh, clubs that use that facility. Yes. The Paralympians also yes. use that facility as their training base. Yes. There is a basketball court, uh, yes. there is a netball court. Yes. I remember volleyball also used to host tournaments there. Yes. But now we see that they, well, during COVID, yes. we brought in people there. Yes. Now those people are not living. Yes. What's going on? Yeah, no, oh, it's it's very unfortunate uh, situation which is happening there. It's it's really giving us a sleepless night as a ministry. If you look at the consumption of electricity and water alone, there it runs into hundreds of thousands every month. Who's paying for that water? It's us, you know. And if you don't pay, I'm sure you've heard. I think a month ago, you know, it was cut off, and then everybody ran around, and the ministry were were, were taken to task as if we are very inhuman. And uh, it's winter, yeah. and 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 and. So, as much as we 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 want to to tackle it, it's a bit of a hot hot potato, you know. It's 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 also there's an element of political sensitivity in it. So, but we are dealing with it. We we are hoping that uh, we together with City of Windu, we find a solution so that we can relocate those people, so we can start cleaning up the the, the facilities there. Um, we had uh, a meeting, I think, a month ago in, in, in June with, the, with the, all the stakeholders involved. And if you remember very well that those people were, were brought there, not by this ministry, mm -hmm. by, but other ministries, you know, Minister of Health and, and, and others, because of COVID. And now everybody's folding their hands and they say, it's your facilities to deal with it. But for us to go there and evict people, you know, everybody said, yeah, you see, this government is very insensitive and it's as I said it's winter time and where we put the people and where we take the people to. So the first thing what we need to do with City of Windhoek and other stakeholders is to identify a place. You know, together and they said okay this is the safe place for our Namibian citizens who are staying there. Who are really some of them are very legitimate they, they have a serious concern. Some are really you know 
taking advantage of yeah, the situation. taking advantage of the situation. Oh. If you go there, you can see even some of them they have even cut electricity. They are wiring it to do funny things. They are not even going through the the normal channels. The water. Uh, there was a time when you go into the hostel itself. Oh. You know, the moment you step in, you know, up to your knee deep, you know, the water is just running all over, and people are staying there, and 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 the place is dirty. The place it is a lot of things. But the moment you go there, then you see most politicians, some of them, they jump up, you know, they try to make a lot of noise about it. But yeah, we, we, we are just government officials and we, we're just trying to do our job. But sometimes we are really, our hands are tied, you know, as much as you want to say, tomorrow, I want my place back. <laughs> I cannot just say that. Yeah, but we are working on, on some solution together with, as I said, with um, other stakeholder, including the city of Vendor, to see if we can. Because remember, it's there and in... Master. 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 Yes. So we are trying to find a joint solution together. So that at least if we relocate them, let's relocate them once at a safe place where they have also facilities like water and electricity. You cannot just dump people, you know, as if uh, we are not caring. We are caring with nation and uh, unfortunately we are paying for it, but yeah. yes, that's what it costs for you to, to But take once again, I'm going to ask you now the timelines again because yeah. it's, it's okay to say we are, we are, we are. Yes. But we are not saying by this time we should have been done with that. Okay. No, the timelines, we, now winter is over, mm. you know? The rainy season is coming. Yes, but we have a window of opportunity. <laughs> and this is the window we want to use. You know, within the next two months, we want hopefully by October, uh, if everything goes to plan, we have our place back. Okay. We already started the process, as I said. But now when people see that, now they start already jumping up before I start. As I said, you want to, to clean up the place, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the youth. Um, the youth, the National Youth Council, how would you describe the state of the National Youth Council at this point in time? Describe in what sense, like we are in good terms or they are, what, what are you trying to tell as, me uh, or to no, ask no, me? No, as, as, <laughs> as, as, as the ministry that yeah. uh, are in charge of uh, the, okay. the, the National Youth Council, yeah. are you happy with the, their performance? What? Are you happy with your projects? Okay. Are you happy with your programs? Okay. Are they relevant to a modern day in Namibia? Okay. Um, do we need to tweak here and there and change them? Thank you very much. I think that's much more clear now. <laughs> no, no, I think they, they, they are very relevant. You see, the issue which we have there at the National Youth Council is, is a, yeah, what I can call it, it, it it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a lack of cohesion, you know, you know within the, the team itself. And that has impacted a lot you know, in terms of the deliveries outside there. If you know, if the if 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 the the team are not working together, together, yeah. you will see it from outside, and that's what's happening, and that's what we are trying to address as a ministry with them, so that they can move in one direction. Currently, they have personal issues, they have self-interest issues. There's a lot, and that's why last year when I asked them to give me the budget, you no, know, they just gave me one page. There's no proper justification, and I said, now you want me to to go to Minister of Finance for this one page. You want me to go and ask for 50 million, for example, mm. but what are you going to use it for? Give me a breakdown. Mm. It took too long. And then I said, okay, if you don't, I will just come back to the, to the, to the amount which I think you need to get until you get your house in order. Mm. That's basically what's happening there. But they are very relevant, and I'm happy that they, they, they realize it themselves now. So they bought, they, they see. But if they don't work together, management and, uh, you know, and the ones who are supposed to take care of them. We will not just give them money for the sake of giving money. And now that's why they are not, now the youth are complaining. They said, no, but we have a National Youth Council, but what are they doing? They said, no, Mr. give us money, said, but giving you money to do what if you are not cleaning up your own head? So really, that's the, really the challenge. But, but the, 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 the good thing is that they are now working on that. Yeah, there's been sentiments that um, it's used by individuals to further their political careers. You can say that. And, uh, and at the expense and, of government. You, you, as I said, you can say that. Mm. And it might be correct to those who, are, who, who picked it up. <laughs> me, I do not know that. Yeah. So yeah. me as an administrator, I only deal with you know administration issues and making sure that if they ask for money for a specific project, I must provide them. If, if I'm not happy with the explanation they give, I will not give them money. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. OK. Um, how much money has government disbursed to young entrepreneurs in the last five years through the national, uh, the Namibia Youth Credit Scheme, which is administered by the ministry? You see, that credit scheme was supposed to be the, you know, the flagship of the ministry in terms of empowering the youth, you know, when it comes to funding their projects. Somehow, somewhere, 
uh, we lost back, you know, two, three, four years back before COVID. And then COVID came, and it made it made matters worse. So the the scheme stopped just like that. At uh, that time, we have given a lot, plus or minus 1.3 million uh, to 75 youth, I think. That's what we gave out. But uh, what we are busy now, we started now reviving the projects. We have made some budgeted provision in the current budget. And as I'm speaking to you now, we, we are busy now trying to, to revive the, the concept as it was and to, to make sure that we do it correct. The one issue which we're not doing correct it was on our record keeping uh, system. Uh, we are, have improved on that one because we want to know, if you ask me today, in Oshana, mm. how many youth have received you know, credit scheme assistance. I can, I can tell you already without even knowing. I said, no. Let me go to my laptop. We have given to 20, and these are the 20. One is in tailoring, one is in, 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 uh, in chicken farming, one is in cattle farming, one is doing bakery. That's what is, was lacking. So, but we are now busy. We, we, the team has been on, on, on this for the last three months now, and uh, we are hoping that we will, uh, in September month, we start implementing it again. But we do have not enough. You know, we started with, I said, let's put into a million now. But we want to increase it to maybe up to 10 million. You know? the, the ones that got the money, mm -hmm. um, how is the ministry sort of uh, monitoring them, so mm -hmm. to put it, or just holding them accountable that we gave you yeah. $10,000 to buy chickens? Yeah. Where are the chickens? You, you see, that's why we said we, we had an intermediary. You know? We were using an agent you know, to, in the regions. You know, in the past, we appointed a re intermediaries to manage it on our behalf. So those are the ones now who, who interact with the, with, with, with the youth, and then they go in the field, they identify the youth, the youth come to them, they disperse the fund to the youth, they collect the fund to the youth. That's what I was talking now. When COVID came, that gap was created because there was not much now communication right. between the ministry and, and those intermediaries and the intermediaries and the youth. And that's what now we, what we have revived now. And we are now, as we speak, we are collecting all the information so that we have a, a clear picture that how much is still in the field. But as I said, we have spent 1.3 million uh, before the COVID came in. That's what I can give you now. But we spent more than that. But that's the exact figure I have at the moment. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to the uh, Red Fontaine, um, the Red yes. Fontaine facility. Yes. Um, my colleagues were there. When was it, Makoya? Last month, two months back, for the SOE games. Yes. Um, they made a lot of observations in mm -hmm. terms of the facility. It's breaking down. Mm -hmm. um, the production, in terms of crop production or animal production, also it's gone down. Mm -hmm. um, what is going on there? Um, what is the ministry doing okay. for us that decay? Okay. No, if you look at the rich container, I said, remember, it's under the control of the youth service not the ministry, Red Fontaine. They are, most, they are the owner of the facilities there. So they are in charge. And they have a facility manager, whatever you can call it, the person who is in charge, responsible for that. Yeah. We ourselves as a ministry had our, uh, our, what do you call it? Is it our retreat? What is it? Yeah. Retreat there. Yeah. Um, was it in June, July, or May? I forgot even the time. Yeah. So when we went there, so, it's not that bad that people would try to make it. Might be because we also stayed there as a ministry. We stayed there uh. in the hostels. Yes, we have issue with hot water here and there. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's not that bad. That and you are right that we need to. We should not let things go the level where we cannot maintain them. Uh. So and those are the issue we, we have discussed with our colleagues, uh, uh, with Dr. Felix Muskubiri's team. Uh. Then some of these issues, let's address them while, while it's still early. Let's not wait until it's, it's late. And again, it comes back to the issue of budget. We said, okay, some of this issue we can together with, with, with you to give you some funding to, to help here and there. Mm -hmm. So it's indeed true that we need to address it and we're addressing it together with them to make sure that we keep it up. When it comes to crop production and others, uh, unfortunately, that's really not my, my area of comment. Uh, it, it, I will preempt what Dr. Musukubil has as, as his own uh, project. So, do they not report to you? They do, mm -hmm. but uh, when you say what we are doing, now I must ask 
I must answer you on his behalf. <laughs> and that's what I do not want to do. Okay. Yeah, now what we do, as I said, he give us his wish list. Oh. Say, no, ministry, I need 10 million for me to revive to sell production. They say, okay, we give you 10 million. Oh, no, we give you 5 million. That's what we do. And then for us just to go back and, and, and see what he's doing. Right now, if you, if you remember very well, we are busy now currently doing the charcoal production, the one we introduced ministry together with him. And it's going on very well. Uh, we started with the training of some of the youth to, to become, you know, very good in, in charcoal production. And the, with the ministry is funding it, but it's under, under its control. So we, we, we are trying small, small, but we get there. <laughs> so sometimes it's also not good for you to go in big while you are not even able to control them. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, but we will hopefully going forward and with the, the board of the, of the NY themselves they, they are also trying to they have their best to, to to make sure that they also get some funding from other projects they have so that they can sustain the operation the, the rate for day yeah in terms of the budget i know you say that uh, it's not peanuts mm -hmm. but um if from where i'm standing like i said earlier on the mm -hmm. budget um for the ministry mm -hmm. is not uh, is not enough for the three directorates yes um you say that the projects are the ones that determine or they come through and, and, and give you direction on how you're going to go about this. Hmm. Now, um, how, but how does it affect you with the, with the current budget that you have? How does it affect you? With, I estimated 90% goes to operations and you're left with maybe 10% for projects. Does it not affect you? Uh, I think you, you are very generous with your operational allocation. <laughs> we cannot spend 90% of our money on operation. Remember, we, remember, if you look at our budget, we have a lot of capital projects, mm -hmm. and some of them, some of the funding is going to, like you said, to federations. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, we just gave 16 million out of our budget to rugby. rugby yeah. You see, and 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 that's going to their own operations. Whether it's our operation, operation or capital intensive, it's not an issue. And we can say in our budget, we have around 70 million going to to the to the to the service. You see. So therefore, we cannot really just say that we spend 90%. If we spend, yeah, it might be, it's, it's, it might be it's an equal balance there, 50, 50, 55 or so, the operation. But yeah, like I said, our budget will always fluctuate. Eh? Mm -hmm. Remember, because we are sometimes depend on specific projects we are taking on. Unfortunately, we are not doing a lot of capital projects where you can have a consistent, uh, you can see that the budget will remain consistent. Because like now, we have, like we're talking about the World Rugby this year. Mm -hmm. That's why we got that 16 million. Maybe next year there's some event happening which require us to go to Mr. Finance to ask them 100 million more than what we have. So you see our budget is up with 100 million mm -hmm. because of that specific event in that year. So that's why it will not really be uh, like a concern. But yeah, because it's sometimes driven by projects and events happening. Uh, as a Minister of Sport, you know we have um, what you call this um, commitment which we need to honor because of international organization. If there's a world, uh, let, let's say if there's athletics, world athletics taking place somewhere next year, oh. we need to budget accordingly. So that budget will be maybe 200 million, so it will pump up our budget to go higher. Then in the year where there's no much activity, then you say, oh, you got peanuts, because we are back to maybe 200 million only. The other year you got 400 million, now we get 200 million as a ministry. So that's how it will, really, I will keep on doing that. But we'll be having a base in terms of uh, operation, like you're saying, yeah. and then uh, capital development projects that we will be able to have a, an would, idea. Would you say you are happy with the budget as it is? Yes, I can honest. I, I'm, I'm honest. I, I can say I'm happy because it's 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 me who's driving the budget. It's not somebody else. And I'm happy because I can go to Minister Finance and Minister Finance. This year, I need. 20 million more. Why? Then I explain it. Then they give me, if they don't give me, I said, yes, I came to you. This is my budget request. So that's why we are asking now, as we speak, we, we had the meeting with the, all the directorates like you spoke about, that give us all your budgetary requirement for the new financial year. Because uh, on the 18th of August of this month, we are going to Mr. Finance to present our now budget review and our new budget. So that's why I'm now busy now trying to get to get all this input from all the mini, uh, all the directorate and all the federation, so that we know how much money do we need for the next budget. Yeah. 
Mm. Idi, thank you very much for your time. We thank really you. appreciate having you here. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, from me, Mark Ondrovu, thank you very much for joining us as we are speaking to Idi Haitengela on the issues affecting the Ministry of Sports, Youth and National Service as we had a lot of things are happening there and we're expecting a lot of good things from this ministry. Thank you very much for having me.